Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining the Netrio User Group Get Together for 2023 in the session on monitoring in federal networks, the what and the why. During this session today, I'll give you a real quick introduction to who I am, uh, who Impress is. Uh, then I will talk a little bit about the OODA loop decision making process. Uh, a lot of people, everybody's heard the term OODA loop, but not a lot of people know what the acronym actually stands for or um, what its origins are. Uh, from there, I'm going to move into the real meat and potatoes of today's session, and that is changing the mindset of what monitoring is. Um, too many individuals today look at monitoring as nothing more than an indicator of what is up and down. Uh, and it, it's capable of doing so much more and should be utilized uh, to, for so much more. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what and why to monitor. And then the last thing I'll go over is I'm going to share... Uh, my personal story of why I started working with Netrio, um, what won me over about them and what I felt distinguished them from some of their competitors. Uh, so if there's anyone listening to this who is uh, trying to decide whether or not uh, they want to move to Netrio or if you're debating between some competitors or just whether or not the monitoring solution is right for you, uh, hopefully uh, my story and, and some of the things that stood out to me will be helpful information. So my name is Aaron Varner. Uh, I'm a retired Chief Officer 3 from the United States Marine Corps. Uh, I did uh, right at 22 years in the Marine Corps. Um, joined in 1998 as a small computer system specialist. Uh, made it to Gunny, so I was an E7, uh, before I put in my Warrant Officer package and then retired as a Chief Warrant Officer 3. Did COM my entire career. Uh, reti retired as a Data Systems Engineering Officer. Uh, the greatest gift the Marine Corps gave me uh, throughout my career was forcing me to be well-rounded and get out of my comfort zone and learn things uh, that weren't necessarily uh, my job. But sometimes when you just, when you're alone and unafraid, you got to learn it and, and, and move on. Uh, and that really gave me a well-rounded background, which I've been able to use in my current role uh, at Impress, as well as what I started out at Impress as a technical account executive. Uh, when I started out, I was supporting just the Marine Corps team. Um, kind of a hybrid role, guy with sales responsibility as well as some engineering responsibility. Uh, and currently, I am the enterprise solutions manager for all of DoD, uh, which requires me to manage and build a team of you know account executive or technical account executives or enterprise solution account executives, which are just like I said, they're guys with a real honor background, supporting account executive can talk the the lingo of the sales guy, the customer, as well as the nerdy guys. Um, and I can say nerdy guys because I am one of those nerdy guys who, if not careful, will will bore you with some random technology technology that I just think is amazing. Um, I've been with Impress for you know almost four years now, three years, seven months. Um, ain't nothing interesting about that besides the fact that uh, I was transitioning out of the military right as COVID was kicking off. Um, which made the transition a little interesting. Uh, I didn't meet most of my coworkers for uh, a little over a year. So um, with that, I'll give you a real quick uh, information on who Impress is. And once again, I'm gonna move through this very, very quickly because I'm not here to talk about Impress uh, or even myself. Uh, I wanna talk about monitoring, uh, but I did wanna you know, maybe try to establish a little credibility or, or give you the, the why you care. Um, and what I want to focus on is, you know, Impress has been doing this for a while, founded in 2001. We have over 20 years experience in the federal IT space. Um, we have top secret security uh, facility clearance. So we work several contracts that require us up to the TS level. Um, you know, we provide services. We have engineers. We have account executives that are out there uh, every day trying to support the customer base. And uh, pretty much across the board, uh, all of us have kind of fell in love with Netrio. Uh these are the contracts, once again, just showing that, hey, man, we've been doing this a while. We're on a lot of contracts. Um, nothing nothing really interesting here. All right. So moving along, uh, OODA loop, a decision-making process. Um, like I mentioned in my intro, uh, most people have heard the term. Not a lot of people know what it stands for. Uh, and it stands for Observe, Orient, Decide, Act. Um it was developed as a never-ending cycle to process information quickly and then start the process over to determine whether or not the decision you made and the act that you did was actually working. Uh, Colonel Boyd developed this concept during the uh, Korean War. He was asked to um, analyze 
while why certain fighter pilots, uh, I think it was in the F-86, were successful against the actual more capable MiG-16. Um, and through that, he came up with this process. Uh, and then over the years, although it was uh, started in uh, for military and strategic purposes, uh, it has become a tool across business, litigation, intelligence, you know, law enforcement, you name it. The process works. And for any of us, you know, IT guys out there, it should kind of sound familiar, right? We observe, kind of orient with what a problem is, make a decision and act upon it. Um, and now for my tie-in, if you're wondering, like, why are we talking about the OODA loop? If that's not what monitoring does for us, I don't really know a better way to explain it, right? Not just observing what's up and down, but lots of analytics and information uh, that instead of having to go out and hunt for, we have a tool to collect and provide to us. By collecting this information, we can orient on problems, uh, whether it's looking at historicals, uh, current operations, or even uh, future planning make a decision and then act. Um, with that, I'm gonna move along to uh, more than an up and down indicator, uh, change the monitoring thought process. Uh, as I mentioned a little bit ago, everybody wants to look at monitoring as, hey, we got green lights, red lights, things are up, things are down, what do we gotta do? Uh, there's so much more, and I apologize, I hit a little button and it moved back. Um, or forward. So what else, and real quick, I'll back up for a second. Sorry, I got distracted by my slides automatically moving on me. Uh, is the internet down? Uh, I chose that as the title for this slide uh, when I want to talk about network and system monitoring uh, being more than just an up and down indicator because anybody who's worked in this industry for any period of time at some point has had some user come to them and say, the internet's down. And I'm like, really? The whole thing? That's amazing. Like, I guess we'll call Al Gore or something and see what happened. Um, but when that happens through monitoring, we're able to be like, hey, the internet's not down. We have a node over here down. We have a server that went down. We have whatever and it causes the issue. We already know. Go back to your office. I'll let you know when it's up. And then they'll probably call you and tell you that email is down also um, because we all know that's really what our users care about, right? Um, behind the scenes, though, what else are we going to use monitoring for besides seeing up and down? Um, pull to baseline or network, early warning indicators, anomaly detection, resource uses, automation. All of that can be garnered from your monitoring tool. Um, I know in my experience, and I'm sure a lot of people out there are going to be like, yep, and shaking their head up and down. Find the network that's been baseline properly. Um People just don't do it and they don't do it because what do we do? We get things up, we get it running, and then we get busy and we don't have the time to go around and touch devices and so on and so forth. So if you can develop a uh, report or customized dashboards that allow you to collect certain data, hey, you know, who are our top users? Uh, um, what information, what are the top sites people are going to? What are the top protocols being used across the network? What are our peak hours? You know, I'm thinking, you know, first thing in the morning, everybody shows up zero eight and uh, checking email and starting their day. Uh, but maybe it's it's later in the day. Maybe it's chow time. Maybe everybody is like me and doesn't like morning. So they schedule all of their meetings for the afternoon. And you realize that, you know, your peak time is actually a little bit later than you thought. But being able to have a tool that you can customize, that you can use to monitor nodes, services, everything across the board and collect that data to properly based on your network actually goes into assisting in the very next thing that I have on the screen here. And this is an early warning indicator, right? Once again, establishing trends, seeing what your network looks like under normal operating uh, circumstances over a period of time will allow us to set up alerts or notices when something's something's off. Um, all of a sudden, we've gone from, you know, a terabyte of data a day uh, through the entry point to 10 terabytes. Like, maybe we should look into that, right? Um, which leads me right to my next one. You're like, oh, I'm doing this, guys, as it kind of builds on each other. Uh, anomaly detection. Uh, getting that early warning indicator, 
seeing is this an anomaly or is this an actual threat? Or has something changed within the network that may require us to look at the resources and plan for some sort of upgrade? There we go to resource usage. Um, and then also the assistance in automating certain tasks uh, so we don't have to go out there and press buttons. Um, Next bullet I have up there is this is something that's near and dear to my heart, um, utilized in after action, current operations and future planning. Um, most people will be required to write an after action report uh, or something uh, to recap an event or a project or, or whatever it is that you may be working on. The problem is most people don't read them, right? And then especially when you're working in the federal space, it's like every time we do something, it's the first time that's ever being done. And I'll pick on the Marine Corps here. Uh, I've supported a lot of MUSE and a lot of shipboard operations. And the Marine Corps has been putting Marines on ships since 1775. And every single time we put a Marine on ship, it's like the first time we've done it. Um, if people would actually look at after action reports, and if those writing the after action reports would not just use them as a uh, a chance to complain about what didn't go well, but also remember, write down what you did good. Write down, you know, what was successful. That way those coming after you can repeat the successes and eliminate some of the failures. And once again, being able to analyze your systems across the board, being able to collect data, historical data, save logs uh, in order to uh, successfully do a, you know, a year in review or two years in review, six months in review of what you're seeing across the network, allowing you to actually move to current operations, future planning, and ensuring that your network is to support everything that you have coming down. Um, when I talk about uh, you know, using in current operations, um, that's where a lot of people actually begin to think about monitoring, right? I'm just going to monitor what's up and down. Um, but what about, uh, you know, uh, a high visibility event? What about um, uh, some sort of VIP event or a high operational time when you know we can't have a problem right now? My network has got to be running. My systems have got to be available. Uh, an outage will be a failure, right? Uh, during those operations, your monitoring tool being able to have the baseline that you did, uh, look for early warning indicators, I don't, and all of those things is, is, is I, want, I don't want to say even more important, but extremely important because um, we don't want to fail. We want to keep everything up and running, so we should be monitoring at all times. Uh, and then, like I said, future planning. Uh, if you're able to look at the after actions, look at your baseline, and slowly analyze and see, you know what? We went from here to here on resource usage. We went from here to here and here to here and so on and so forth. Um, maybe I should begin to plan an upgrade. Maybe I should engage management. Uh, maybe I should write a report or a paper or anything to say, hey, this is what we need. And then there's nothing better than being able to go to our bosses with actual analytical data, right? A, a, a metric that says, that supports our argument. Uh, I can go to my boss and say, hey, we need to upgrade all of our servers to the newest and latest, you know, VX rail or HPE or whatever it is. I have a lot more clout if I can take actual data and bring it, put it in front of it and show why we need to do uh, what I'm suggesting. And again, your monitoring tool can make this so easy. And I've watched NetTrio and some of their tools really make this easy. And a lot of these things that we just don't do in the IT industry because we're too busy with what is right in front of us, that trio has simplified. Uh, last thing I got on here is, you know, trend identification. Uh, again, it just goes back to baselining, being able to see, man, every day at noon, you know, our usage is going way up. And then you realize that, Somebody installed a gaming server or something, and all the employees are they're playing World of Warcraft or uh, I don't know what's that. I forget it. The new one. My kids play it all the time, but I don't remember. Whatever. I'm I'm, I'm too old and don't remember that crap. Uh, we'll go Minecraft or something like that. Um, so moving to the next one, you know what and why to monitor. 
And you notice my subtitle here is, again, let's change the monitoring thought process. So what to monitor? Super easy question here. Any and everything, right? If it's possible to monitor it, we should be looking at it. Now, of course, everybody knows we identify critical assets and so on and so forth. But hey, I mean, at most of the time, critical assets are, are protected more so than some of the other assets. We all know that the user is the weakest point and the inside threat is what gets more uh, networks compromised than anything else. So monitor devices, remember, you know, all the way down to the lowest level, uh, probably least secure portion of your network. Now, why to monitor? This is where it gets a little bit more, and I covered a lot of this on the slide before, so I'm really going to be able to move through some of this quickly, but historical data. Um, being able to provide historical data to management, senior level leadership, um, and, and for them to be able to identify, hey, what are the impacts of an outage or a cyber attack? Well, hey, sir, we had an outage. Uh, this is why we had an outage. This is how long the outage took to resolve. Uh, you can now go back and look at this same time frame and, and look at what the second and third order effects of said outage were. Um, if we have multiple outages over a five to 10 year period, I say five to 10 years because all, you know, we all know we don't have multiple outages one year, right? We don't want that. I don't want to put that. I'm knocking on wood right now. I don't want to put that bad juju out there on anybody who's listening to this. Um, so go multiple hours over a large span of time, we can build historical data for all of those, enabling senior leadership to go back and look, like, once again, kind of flowing here, the next slide, are we meeting SLAs? Like, are we meeting service level agreements? Well, hey, I noticed every time we've had an outage, those are the only times we're, we're missing our SLAs. Uh, we'll notice that after an outage, uh, we end up losing X amount of business every time uh, because... Customers are finicky and they quit and moved on. Um, current operations, a incident response and management, you know, that that big that anomaly that gets detected, the being able to, to see something before the threat actually becomes a threat. Um, and I'm trying to remember who it is right here off the top of my head, but I just recently read an article uh where company was using, uh, I can never pronounce it right, Okta cloud services. And through their monitoring system, which I believe is Netrio, they were actually able to uh, let o o Okta know that they had a compromise. Um, and it actually took them several weeks after they were informed by this other company to identify it themselves and put their remediation in place. Um, so once again, somebody was doing their job, they had a good monitoring system in place, and it gave them that early indicator warning. They saw something that was an anomaly, uh, and they were able to go out there and uh, protect their systems and actually have no data breach on their end. Um, and I'm going to tie it back into our OODA loop decision-making process, observe, orient, decide, act. During current operations, nothing's better than real-time information, you know, uh, we had a saying back in the day when I was in the Marine Corps, it's like, there's no such thing as bad news, just timely and accurate reporting. And that's what we want from our monitoring tool. I want timely and accurate reporting. I want to be able to observe, orient on the problem, decide and act. And if all goes well, observe that there are no problems, decide and act. We're going home early and we're going to have a good day. Uh, and then, of course, future planning. Uh, once again, this is why we monitor being able to look at our resources, see what is in use, uh, see what the growth has looked like over time, uh, and plan accordingly and be able to present actual actionable metrics to our leadership or, or to who, who's decision makers on what needs to be done. Uh, all of us know that when it comes down to our IT infrastructure and equipment, sometimes it's out of sight, out of mind. Users care about, hey, the internet's up or internet's down. Hey, my email's not working. They don't think about a lot of what goes on behind the scenes to make that work. And if it's working, sometimes it's hard to convince leadership to come off of those uh, those dollars and get us an upgraded infrastructure before it becomes a problem. So once again, 
through your monitoring capability, you're able to collect the analytics, you're able to show, you're, it's, it's just not a debatable thing. Hey, over the last uh, five years, sir, we've gone from utilizing 25% of our storage space to 75%. At this growth rate, we have another year and a half and we're gonna be maxed out. If we don't do something now, we're gonna have an outage, we're gonna have a problem. And here's the metrics that show you what I'm saying. That's why this is a priority. Um, and then of course, even resource management. Same example, 25 to 75% of our uh, storage capacity is gone. Now let's start investigating. We observed it. We're not in a problem. You know, we go out there and we investigate and we find, well, man, everybody's storing pictures of their children. You know, I got, you know, crazy personal information all over, you know, company storage. Hey, here's a memo. Everyone, you have 30 days to remove all personal data from the blah, 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 or it'll be deleted. You know, once again, how else are you going to get that information through other than through monitoring of your systems? Uh, you can tell somebody, hey, once a month, go out and check what's on the storage. But that's a really, really tedious process that you're probably not going to follow. I go back to baseline and network. It's not done properly because it's not followed. It's too hard. If people got to hunt for things, they don't want to do it. It's just human nature. Through proper monitoring, it makes it easy. We can do it. All right. That's kind of like, I feel like I was standing on a soapbox uh, preaching. So if I was, uh, I apologize. It, uh, it's just something that uh, I see a lot and I'm a little passionate about because of my experiences and the times that I've been bitten in the rear end uh, because of not proper, proper monitoring, not planning properly uh, for how we are looking at our network. So now I'm going to move into um, a why not trio. There are many options out there, and I'll tell you, I don't consider any of the options bad. Um, all really good tech. However, I do have some things about that trio that I feel really stand out and set them apart for, uh, for me personally. Um, one of the first things is I really like the way they are set up to what they're set up to monitor and the options that they have for how. Uh, the tool can be installed and utilized. Um, especially in the federal government, there's a really bad habit of the government buying a solution, giving it to the end user and saying, hey, you know, here's your solution. Make all of your requirements fit this solution. Uh, and that's not the way it works. Uh, every network is different. Uh, every operation is different. Uh, there are sections within a network that are different. And I believe NetTrio is one of the most... Uh, modular, flexible uh, monitoring systems for you to design your installer or, or, or monitoring architecture to what meets your requirements. Uh, whether you need you know, network devices, systems, application, end user devices, or, um, or, or cloud uh, resources, they have the ability to do it. Uh, they got the software as a service uh, version where it's not on-prem, you got on-prem, um, we know that often in the federal infrastructure, um, there will be air-gapped uh, networks that are uh, of a higher classification. So having that on-prem option and being able to to utilize that, it, it's 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 big. Um, I know I don't give I believe uh, and that trio is monitoring uh, systems for the which one of those uh, you know pretty important to us and uh, definitely air wrapped. Um, so that's one of the things I was like, man, uh, if they're doing DOE and, and nuclear systems, um, I really want to look a little deeper uh, and, and see, you know, what, what won them that contract and how they were able to, to do that. Uh, moving on to the next couple of bullets, simplified, simplified license model. There is nothing worse than reading a slick sheet or a data sheet, seeing all these capabilities buying said product and then realizing you don't have the capabilities because there is 15 different licenses or whatever out there uh, and not to pick on anybody but i got a lot of really really good friends that work with cisco so i'll use them um they call their licensing smart licensing and i joke with several of my buddies that uh, there ain't nothing smart about the way you guys are doing licenses it's confusing as you can possibly imagine um, and what does that do for customers and end users? It turns them off when they can't figure out how 
you know, they license something or what license they need, they, they'll, they'll start looking at some routes. You can have the, the best product in the world, but if it's not intuitive and user friendly, they're not using it. Um, also like the ease of install and maintenance, um, you know, not needing an additional uh, database program, uh, getting the install process down to hours, vice days. Um, it, it's just, you know, time is money and uh, especially federal employees, uh, they just, a lot of them are overtaxed. They don't have the support they need. So if we can simplify something, I think, I mean, that's just what I look to do. Uh, going from there to independent reviews in a vast partner ecosystem and customer base. Hey, I'm not just going to take a sales pitch and hopefully nobody in here is like, oh, man, that was a great sales pitch. I love you. And then you just move on without doing any of your own research. Uh, so I, I did look into Netrio um, and excellent independent reviews, right? Everything I look at, uh, high marks. And of course, you know us nerds and us smart guys. Somebody's always going to find something to complain about because we just want to show how smart we are. So when I look at a bunch of five-star and four-star um, ratings and nothing below that from an independent evaluator, um, it, it takes a little bit of weight with me. And then the vast partner ecosystem and customer base. Uh, I started looking into uh, who else Netria was working with, what their customer base looked like. Um, and we're going to go ahead and go to the next slide here because I kind of threw out all the partner logos. And if you look down there in the bottom right-hand corner, you've got that Impress Technology Solutions. Man, what an awesome company that is. You guys are, you should, you should really love them. Um, looking at the rest of them, all joking aside, I mean, it's a verified who's who of a lot of innovative leading companies uh, in the IT space. Um, that carried once again, a little bit of weight uh, with me because I know Netrio is a little bit of a younger company, but seeing what they've been able to do in a short time and how they're actually kind of changing a little bit of the way uh, monitoring is being done and looked at, uh, to me is exciting. I, I love to innovate. I love, uh, you know, the new thing when the new thing is done properly. We don't always do that. So I don't want to, you know, too much on the new thing, but uh, what they're doing. I don't have the slide with all their partners on it, um, but it's another one. If you look, or I'm sorry, not partners, uh, customers. If you look across it, I mean, commercial industry, federal industry, you know, DOE, FBI, uh, working with the DOD, um, they have a very wide array of a customer base. And to me, once again, that shows flexibility and the ability to monitor a network based on the requirements of what is needed, not just a one size fits all, here's the solution, hey, make it work for your network. Um, and hey, I couldn't come do this with them without giving a little sh shameless plug. It's also something else I saw, you know, for a younger company, they're winning awards, right? 21, 22, 23, you know, gold medal, top rated, top rated. I just, um, I know, like certificates and awards, they're a dime a dozen, right? Every car manufacturer out there tells you they won the safety award from some independent reviewer of the year before. Um, however, when you're getting them over and over again and you're getting them from multiple sources, Again, I look at that as, all right, they're doing their thing. So a little shameless plug for those of you who don't know, but this is how they've been recognized so far. All right. Uh, again, I'm uh, going to wrap up here. Uh, I hope this was not boring to everybody and uh, uh, was presented in a manner that was enjoyable. Uh, what I'm going to leave you with, because I feel that it is very pertinent to monitoring and the management of our networks. It's we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act, but a habit. Uh, for the longest time, this quote was attributed to Aristotle, but it's not. It's really unknown. Um, but we are what we repeatedly do, and we want to manage our, our networks in an excellent manner. So utilizing a monitoring tool to develop processes to help us automate, to get those early warning indicators, to baseline our network, that's just practicing excellence and turning it into a habit. So thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate uh, you listening. And thank you to Netrio for giving me the opportunity to talk. Have a good day.